Um, right now we're talking to what are the possible solutions? We're, we're, we're discussing three solutions that were presented um, to the group. The solutions are becoming soul empowered, uh, transcendence, and also personal uh, leadership. So we're diving in right now with the responses and the check-ins. Right now we're uh, up to uh, Keith. Keaton, the floor is yours, buddy. All right. Okay. So um, I have this one thing, and I I'm not gonna lie. I was I I kind of was afraid to express it, but um, as I've sat here and let it cook in my mind, I'm I, I'm I, I feel like I have enough to uh, support why I'm um, why I'm saying this. So um, I know it might be a little bit uncomfortable for some of you men, but please hear me out and let this just rest in your head. Um, and if you don't, if you just feel this group with it, that's completely fine. Uh, but just, it, it just give me, um, just please give me a, 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 a fair opportunity. That's all I'm asking. So, um, I have been involved in nudism for the past 10 years. And I can honestly say that it has been very rewarding. And I can also say that in recent years, it actually have uh, have uh, flourished in uh, in, in, uh, in in people of color, not just African American, but Muslim, Hindu, Arab, um, and Asian. So I really what I um, and can you just put the two up there, the, the the three up there, so I can kind of say where I would like for this to go because I do want this to be an opportunity to be um, expressed in two ways. So it would definitely be either transcendent or it could also be personal leadership. So I would even be as, as a fair kind of a thing. Um, uh, if you don't feel comfortable about making it a public thing, you can always do it as a personal thing and try to work your way through it. So as well as going into this, you know, the one thing I, I have I, I have um, that had come to my mind, us as men have been using our penis as a weapon. The reason I say that is because us as men, we have impregnated we have impregnated women. We have um, we have become fathers to multiple children, and unfortunately, uh, there are many men out there who have not or refused to take responsibility of taking care of the of the kin that they have brought into um, they have brought into the world. And we have also made it into a talk show slash game show. So when I say that, I mean, Maury Povich has basically turned it into a business, clearly. Um, so I, I, I don't like the fact that us men are using our penis as something of a weapon that in a way hurts, hurts innocent people it hurts the women and it hurts ourselves. And I feel like stuff like, I know this might sound weird, but it should be something that we should celebrate, but not, we should not, we should celebrate in other areas uh, as well as fertilization. Um, and fertilization is something that should be a responsibility. It should not be used as free will. Because when we see what happens when it's used as free will, it, be it, it becomes devastating. Um, some other things that what he used to support, you have, uh, one thing you have to remember, scientifically, us as men of color, black, brown, and other things of that nature, we actually need, we are actually um, in need of sunlight. We are in need of original sun. Um, you know, Caucasians and um, and lighter skin people can only be in the sun for 15 minutes. But it, is off, but it actually has been said that for us of darker skin that we should be in the sun at least 30, 30 minutes for an hour. Um, so we can handle sunlight. We can handle sunlight very, very well. You should also understand that many uh, communities of color, African, Hindu, um, uh, Muslim, Arab, you know, a lot of those communities and foreign countries do not wear clothes. Um, they wear very limited garments. So while we're here always talking about Nikes and uh, Louis Vuitton and the latest dress and everything like that, you got to remember some some countries, um, it's not it's not an, it's not the fact that they don't have a lot of money. It's just their culture that they are not clothed um, fully as we are in the country. Uh, and I also feel, and we are, we 
our bodies are actually something as a work of art. Um, when you see a heavier set man, a heavier set woman, a man of muscle, a man of, who is very skinny, um, it, what makes it so special is that because we, it's like we have that tone, we have that skin tone that is um, very unique, it's very nice. Um, and, you know, and I don't think we could say that for certain, for certain, for certain people. I'm not, just, I'm not saying, ace, I'm not saying the race, I'm just saying certain people. Um, so I think what we need to do is just have this opportunity to celebrate bodies more. Because our, when I hear my black is beautiful, I, I feel like that's only like a 50% thing because when we say our black is beautiful, um, we question the black. Um, you got to remember, we are, we, unfortunately, we are a community where um, we're talking, well, you know, if you're light skin, you get shunned for it. If you're dark as hell, you're shunned for it. Um, so what is really acceptable in our, 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 in our community? I mean, you know, I don't even know, looking at my skin tone, um, how I would fit into the mold. So when we are able to bear our bodies, when we're able to talk about our bodies, when we are able to, um, when we are, when we, when we take the time to actually talk about the penis, talk about the vagina, talk about the boobs, and tell us what that stuff like that means, because I, I feel like there's so much more there, and it's not just for making babies or having a good time in the bedroom. Um, you know, I just feel like there is just so much more to it, and I would, I think that's something that should be as expressed. And I'm in. Keaton, thank you for that. Um, first, thank you for asking for what you want and creating the space for yourself. Second, thank you for bringing that perspective because I think, in my, in my judgment is, majority of people of color are, have yet to truly appreciate their bodies. And it's interesting because I see like in, in the media, you know, they, they may villa or, you know, shoot and, and hunt, have the hunting season may, season may be on. And at the same time, they want to be black. That culture is strong. That culture is sexy. Like it's, it's like, um, like for example, I, I had to slow down on my porn consumption because like I'm, I'm in this space right now of learning to treat my body as sacred. And I noticed that with, with, with my reducing the consumption of porn, focusing on semen retention, channeling that energy, that creative sacral energy into my body for that sacred divine connection has been like a practice. And it is valuable because it comes back to the health care. How are we taking care of ourselves? How do we, and you all, and one thing, another thing I want to highlight that you brought up, you talked about the conversation. Let's have conversations about the penis, about the vagina, about how we connect beyond sexual, beyond sexual, because I think there's a, what you bring, man, thank you for bringing that because I think that's a very, that is, and and also celebrating the body. Um, damn, yeah. Yeah, I felt that. And can I say this uh, as well? And I, I'm sorry, I don't, I, I don't mean to cut you off or to, or, or, or take too much more of your time. But, um, Please. But, um, but, I, but I, and honestly, it, and honestly, I would not, I would not say this if it was not true. You are very, even as a person of color, you are very respected. Uh, you are very respected in, in, in places, in suitable places uh, where nudity is involved. I've seen, I, I've seen it several times over. Um, so, um, you know, dealing with Caucasians, dealing with Mexicans, dealing with Arabs, dealing with, uh, dealing with Asians, um, you're treated no differently. I mean, you know, like, I'm not going to lie, being that I have only been the only, being that because of, I have been fearful of going to some of these places because of skin color, um, but I, I have gotten, I, I've gotten the best reactions. I mean, I've never, I've never been called out my name. I've never been... Uh, ostracized or anything um so please you know know that it, stuff like places like this um are, are very respectable and they and, and they give you they, they give you the best treatment I, I i kid you not um and like i said i'm i'm very happy that i am starting to see more of it within our community 
because uh, I feel like we should be we, we should take the opportunity to celebrate more of stuff like this, especially when we're talking about very different body types. I just want to get that out. Thank you for that. Thank you. Blessings, man. Uh, any man have a comment, um, question, thought? Yeah, Ivy, please. Thank you. Uh, I love talking about the penis in the body. So I'm, glad <laughs> too. I'm glad you brought that up. And I'm actually just going to add a little piece there. Um, the, I'm lucky in Vermont, nudity is legal. And for the most part, a lot of the stuff we do is skyclad. Uh, it's getting into the woods, wilding, beating drums around the fire, just bring, bringing it all out. And I'm really sorry to see that disappear from MKP, uh, you know, because it really is empowering, Keaton. It really is. But knowledge is power. And you were talking about wisdom. And I think that's what I want to do to validate a lot of what I just heard. Um, because for me, it's like getting an aha moment where I understand why something is happening to me and around me, and it sort of empowers. And I'm going back again, and, and I'm going to keep doing this. What is underneath that? Generally speaking, rape is the primary weapon of war. It always has been, and it always will be. You know, so that's another thing that goes into, I think, of what I've heard. But as a black community, and here it goes back to the ancestral healing, we are still living under the impression of 300 years or more. And it's went on for so long, it's a part of our psyche. We had no control over our mating. We had no control over our women. We had no control over our children. And especially when it became legal to import people in, they had stud farms, they had buck busting, they had all sorts of things to keep the product flowing. The children would be taken away, the men were not responsible. You know, so in a sense, I think if we're going to talk about empowerment, it's to understand where that energy comes from. And the way to release that energy for me, in my opinion, is in a sense healing of the pain and suffering of our ancestors who had no control, no control over their bodies, no control how they were used, no control of what happened to their women, no control of what happened to their children. That is a visceral part of us and we're still playing it out. And I think in a sense that needs to be said. And this par but parallel that I'm drawing applies to just about everything I've heard people saying. And so, so um, Paul is very visible and he says it hits there. It's in the heart and in the body. It's, I think it's by hearing and understanding these things, we get those visceral hits that we can release those energies, which are the energies that are keeping us uh, in straitjackets for nothing, basically for nothing more. You know, there's this whole thing of the sperm warfare that people, men don't talk about. But that is, oh, oh yeah, sperm warfare. It is, um, it, is, it is amazing. And what is part of me as a male and what about of that is being perverted based on the experience of my lineage, so to speak, which is what happens in... in um, and breeding farms and in stud farms and in all the other stuff, you know, to understand that. And then, so anyway, I'll just sort of stop it there and limit it to what I sort of heard Keaton said. But this is like, this is like everything everybody was saying. I mean, like, here's where it originated from. Understand that, heal that, and then get beyond it. Because people were asking, why is this happening? And it's going to keep happening over and over again until I release that energy, heal my ancestors, and forgive the persons that did it. Thank you. Brother, thank you for that. I got to look up sperm warfare. We're going to have to... Um... Wow. We got we got to have a, we can have a conversation just off that topic right there. Yeah. I gotta be here. I gotta be back for that one. No, <laughs> wait, that's what I'm, saying. I'm like, yeah, I gotta put this in the schedule, bro, because this is the dark, the dark nature. That's what is that? The dark nature. Okay. Lyle Watson. 
Uh, L Y A L L Watson, Dark Nature. This is just one book on sperm wealth warfare. It, it, uh, uh, sperm warfare. It, it, he's an anthropologist. He goes through all of history. He goes through all of the animal kingdom. It is a natural part of being male. And a good example of why when a, when a lion takes over a pride, he kills off all the young of the previous leader. Wow. That's just one example. Humans do the same thing. Oh, wow. Wow. It's like we're fighting each other. So what I'm hearing in that is like we're fighting each other in the community on a whole other level. Right. And that's what was brought up before. Wow. You know, so my children could survive. I'm going to kill yours off. Oh, shit. Yeah. And oh that's my, that, us. Yeah. I, I know. I, I know. We're, we're talking, I, that, that that is like seriously. I, like, and I don't mean this in a, in a, in a mean spirited way. That is another topic for another day that we can go forever about. Uh, yeah, and I think I, that, listen. Best believe I wrote that down because we're going to bring that to the collective, man. Because I think it's more. I think it's important for more men of color to hear that. Yeah. That specifically, yes. Yeah. Um. Thank you, Ivy. Thank you, Keaton, for bringing that to the circle, man. That's what's up. Um, uh, James, I'm going to bring the screen back up. Uh, for you, what what is it for you, bud? Oh, uh, wow. Um, that's a lot. <laughs> it's been a lot of good discussion. <laughs> These the comments have been awesome. Um, you know, I guess... I guess mine would fall under, or I think what sticks out to me is, uh, I guess, personal leadership, which, again, is just a matter of exploring all of these, um, just really the taking care of your yourself and um, and what that what that means for you, and incorporating, again, you know, um, what you what's be what is what's been passed down from your your elders because I think there was a really good point about that um, which you know you can see how um, you're able to you know take these I mean a lot of these old remedies and things are, are you're seeing being brought back up but they're not being they're not being discussed as where they originated from um, it's been almost been co-opted and now it's turned into a whole new niche. Um, um, uh, uh, but those were, you know, those were from our our roots and our ancestors, I think. Uh, but again, what what that means for you, and, and, the, and this is a part of it, is learning and expanding um, in order to, um, you know, uh, uh, find the tools that 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 work for you and what and. And, and, and incorporating those into your into your daily life and into your daily practice, um, like you said, meditation, yoga. Um, uh, I, I think it's it's just very expansive, and I think that what sticks out for you as an individual um, and is something that you know you should continue to follow um, follow that path because obviously it resonates with you for a reason, and and there's untold um, opportunity there. Uh, for you to for you to continue to grow, I, I think that's. I mean, I've, I I really just been absorbing a lot of the discussion and the comments, and it's been really it's been really powerful. So I, I'm I'm processing a lot of it right now. So I don't. I, I think I'll, I'll I'll leave it there, and I'm you know I'm, I'm all in. Blessings, James. Thank you, brother. Thank you, man. I like. Um... It's like I, I personal leadership is, I think, is a, is a, is a key uh, for how we make good of this. I'll put good in quotes um, and how we move forward. What are the things that we get to do move forward? Because, and, and James, you hit on something about the individual's opportunity. And I think it's tuning into what, what works well for the individual. What's going to help the individual to... Um, uh, take care of their solutions. And I think, and part of that, um, I see too, James, I'm curious for you, like, um, 
uh, to, to hear your thoughts on this is like with personal leadership, like where does that begin? Does that begin with um, providing education? Does that provide, does that begin with providing resources? Um, well, I'm curious to hear your thoughts on wh where do you see that personal leadership? How does that get started for a person? But what could be provided for them, like for you? Uh, the opportunities for, I guess, more or less education. I mean, I think this, these kind of platforms where you're getting different, um, you know, uh, you're expanding your perspective because I think that, you know, um, and that openness and willingness to, to, to begin to, uh, have those, you know, have those conversations or be a part of those conversations or dialogues, um, is where I think that it's, it's important because I think that, um, you know, as you, as you learn, you will want to, I guess, you know, teach in some way, in some way, give back, give back of that knowledge that you have acquired. And a lot of times, you know, you can take in this information and then, and as you educate yourself, make it tangible for you. And then you can also, you know, there gives you the opportunity to speak on your experiences as well, um, which, you know, sometimes can be a, be a bigger, I guess, catalyst for, for, for people um, more so than, than theoretical. Um, you know, theoretically, yeah, you, you know, um, can be you know it can be applied but I think when you have um, tangible results and, ten and intangible um, outcome that you can um, share I think that speaks that speaks volumes too and that that may lead you know uh, uh, people to actually want to explore for themselves the same you know what you were able to um, the results that you were able to you know you were able to uh, to achieve Thank you for that, man. And it's, it's interesting as you're saying that I'm thinking about the relationship you and I have because it's like anytime we have a good book or we gain good insight, we well, we've been known to share with each other on a regular for as long as I've known you, man. So I appreciate what you're saying uh, with that. Uh, Keaton, I saw you had your hand up. Did you have uh, some thoughts, comments, questions? Uh, yes, I did. So this is the one thing um, that I feel like is very, very important, um, it, especially when it comes to, uh, hopefully it's a, this is uh, a fair answer to what you're asking. And it really comes to questioning and answering yourself. Um, one thing I can honestly say, this is just not, this is this not just in, in dealing with, you know, black community or people, person of color. This just, this literally can just go across the board. People do not like it when one is questioning, when one, uh, when, I, okay, sorry, hold on. Let me rewind, get it right. The choir does not like it when the soloist questions the choir. When I say that, it's because, you know, there, there's basically something already in place. Um, going, uh, speaking into, um, you know, our African American community, I mean, it's ingrained at us that you know we're supposed to say the N word and have a hundred uh, have a hundred uh, kids that we don't take care of and eat fried chicken and watermelon and go to a Christian church and all these things under the sun. But you know, I know as me, you know, me being a black man, being somebody of color, I just know that that's not my kind of thing. So when I question what it means to be black, I get a lot of backlash from all around because. You know, because I wear I wear a different kind of jean and my jeans are baggy and I keep them up on my ass and put a belt on, that is seen as something not normal. And people find that to be a problem. And when it's a problem, it, it's something that I think uh, that really strikes uh, a fear in a lot of people because now they're thinking that you're kind of, that, that you're going um, on the other side. So to speak, and they're not, and, and they're not quite, and, and they're not in return um, getting the answers to your questions, you know. And that's why I say questions and answers are important. You know, I'll give you an answer if you ask me, but the thing about it is, you don't want, you don't want to ask, and you don't want me to ask you. 
Um, so that is really something that has really caused a lot of friction. Another thing about answers is not um, answering yourself. You know, when I um, when I take the time to learn about a lot of things and I find that they are something that of a, that is of validity, um, that somebody will will. Uh, question me or challenge me on, but not challenge me to the point to where I'm right or wrong. So answering the stuff that you feel is going to be help you get through life, that, that is going to bring closure, that is going to um, basically, you know, cause a light bulb in your head to go on. Basically, having these kind of things in your life that actually is able to help you write that book that you know that you can that you know that can um, help another person before or after you um, to you know speaking into a room of people to actually bring out into the universe what you wanted to what you wanted to see and what would you like for it to change to kind of make something a little bit better and never worse. Um, so yeah, you know, I just think that questions and answers in many different ways and forms should definitely be something that should um, basically be um, that should, questions and answers should definitely be something that should be more expressive um, because we believe me, we can all go very very far if we do that and not. And not and, and and not challenge us to a point. So th there should never be a right and a wrong. There should never. If this is not Jeopardy, there should we, we should not treat life like a game of Jeopardy. You are free to disagree. You are free to debate. There's nothing wrong with that. There, that we, that you have every right to not go with you know what it is I believe. You have every right to challenge me to what it is that I say. But. You you do not have the right to play Alex Trebek. There's only one Alex Trebek, sure. and that's it's always that way. Uh, and I know. Thank you for that, Keith. Yeah, you, listen, man. You you have, I agree with what you're saying. In that, listen, if we're gonna have these this container to present these questions, we want to make sure that we have like we have a space where we can be first judgment free, and then a healthy challenge to really test the authenticity of the person's thought. Be free of like trying to like beat the person down over it. It's more like, hey, listen, I want, I, oh, I'm interested, I'm, I'm interested to hear more about your perspective on this and, and, and be able to really extract a lot of the learning so it can be held, had, had as, a, as something that can be a actively integrated from that session. So I appreciate what you're saying about the questions and answers. And, 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 and that education piece of the conversation the dialogue. Uh, we did have uh, Dana Dane check in. I just wanna, before we go to Ivy, um, James, thank you for your contribution. Keaton, thank you for your words. Uh, Dana, can you hear us? I can hear you. Blessing. <laughs> I was worried I was late um, or a little too late. So I'm so glad to be here with you. Thank you for your words and sharing everyone. Blessings. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Listen, we're going to have you check into the container um, before we continue on. We're, we're talking about solutions right now uh, going forward. So, Dana, if you could tap in your name, city and state that you're calling from, your mood, and then what you uh, were looking to get out of the call today or how you got here. Um, so my name is Dana. I am in Bloomfield, New Jersey. I'm feeling relaxed and um for me, for the call today, I, I recently learned this um, BIOC term. Um, I'm sorry, BIPOC term. And I was like, oh my God, that's me. I didn't know this, this existed um, with all of the letters, not as individual letters. I thought it was like all one thing together. And I was like, that's me. Um, but, you know, I love Paul. I love any and everything Paul does. As an energy worker, I know how important it is to be in the presence of other powerful, positive people. And so I am here to receive that and um, show up for all that you do, Paul. I love you. Love you too, Dana Dane. Appreciate you so much. Thank you for being here. Uh, we have Chris calling from uh, Houston, Texas. We have Keaton from Austin, Texas. Ivy's coming in from Vermont, and James is here from uh, New York, New York. Uh, Dana, we're, we're, uh, we've checked in with, um, we st started first, we checked in with uh, 
some of the main concerns uh, with that's that's uh, facing uh, Black Indigenous people of color. Uh, and welcome to the term, by the way. Welcome to the term. What's up to you? Uh, and we started. We talked about things like healthcare. Um, uh, and actually, I'm just going to go back to the screen so we could just dive into it real quick. And then I'm going to have Ivy and uh, contribute. And then Dana, if you'd like to contribute, I'm going to have you do that as well. We talked about like uh, healthcare and concerns, hunting season, systemic racism. Um, and now where we are is we had everyone check in on what could be potential solutions. So right now we're at Ivy, and then if you'd like to contribute, I'm gonna, I'll toss over to you. So Ivy, comments? Um, just a few. <laughs> um, as I'm listening, and there's a, like you said, there's a lot of great ideas that are put out there. And so my question is like, how does it become sustainable? And not fall into the trap, which was stated a couple of different ways, where we tear down a system and basically replace it with the same system, but under a different name. Um, it was sort of interesting because some people stated, or someone stated like the last four years, or this is new. It's totally, what's happening is totally independent of the current um, person that's in office. It has been going on for so long that and then with media, we're just more aware of it because I'm sitting here chuckling because I grew up with a lot of the stuff that's happening now and as, it, as did our ancestors. So anyway, uh, getting off topic in my head. So in the sense of making this sustainable, these are not three separate things. These are three stages in my mind that I have to empower my soul first then with that knowledge is power, with that knowledge transcend the limitations or the straight jacket that I place myself in, and then move into my leadership. You know, so in one sense, I really do need to understand my personal limitations, my genetic limitations, and my soul limitations, because they have been put in place and they are so subtle, the subtle energies. And I, when I'm teaching, I talk about a fulcrum and a lever. I can walk up to a boulder and try to move it, and it will take all my strength, and I may not even succeed in doing it. But if I get a lever and step back, and the bigger the lever, the closer I am to my source and the closer I am to spirit, the easier it becomes to move that boulder. You know, so I don't want to walk up to the boulder and fight. I'm going to get myself a fulcrum, I'm going to get myself a lever, and I'm going to move it eff relatively effortlessly. Now, another thing that was coming up is like the reason why. And it's sort of like, in a sense of how insidious this has been, there's a thing called the Doctrine of Discovery, which was put out by the church, which in the United States and ratified by the Supreme Court of the United States is the Discovery Doctrine, which placed into law, we are, we are not human. We do not have the mental capacity to manage our own resources and that European Americans have every right to take it as they will without any repercussions. It is a law. The Native Americans fought that law on their own for 10 years and was losing. Where were we? Were we even aware that it was there? So when we talk about what's really ingrained and what's going on around us. You know, in a sense to understand that and to see it and the way it rears its head is really, I think, very important. Um, within the science community, uh, when the church was having a battle with creationism versus uh, evolution, they had to do a lot of backpedaling. And so what they concluded was that there were white people all over the world in hidden little pockets because, of course, the Native Americans 
and the, the Mesoamericans could not have possibly have built those pyramids. Blacks could not have possibly built those pyramids. There had to be white people there or aliens. Let's go with aliens or white people. You know, so within the system that we're dealing with, I think in a sense to understand that, at least for this person, it's sort of like, oh, that's why I think that way. That's why I feel that way. That's why I'm acting that way. You know, it, it, it just comes up through recently, I mean, like within the last two weeks, what I delved into was the definition of demon. The original definition of demon was genius and deity. So when I look at everything this country demonizes, I realize there is my power. They demonize the witches. They demonize women. They demonize, they demonize working with medicines and herbalism. They demonize ancestral work. They demonize everything that is us. And so when you say people pulling back from it, it's because we're taught at a young age, avoid the demons, avoid the evil. Who defines what those demons are? Who defines what those evils are? I'm, I'm, I was talking, I'm listening to people talking. I mean, like, I've, I do herbs. I don't do a garden. I don't have a green thumb. But I do herbs. I do wildcraft. I do a bunch of stuff, right? And I come to find out that someone that I thought was a friend actually thought I was the devil worshiper because of all that stuff. A good friend of mine <laughs> is, is, is like a six or seven generation Vermonter and raised Christian. And I had to sit and talk to him. I says, um, doesn't your aunt grow plants? Uh, doesn't your father dows? Dude, that's all we're talking about here. He says, but that's the devil's work. But it's all right if the Christians are doing it. It's all right if the males are doing it. You know, the whole thing of ancestral worship, talking to the invisible was so demonized by the church. So much of our power our writ was so totally rewritten that when European, well, I shouldn't say Europeans, but when the Nicene church or the Roman Catholic church spread out across the world, starting with the Crusades, they stole every relic of power. They stole every written document of written history of what, or, or, or verbal history of what other people were doing hid it away, and then put in place the doctrine of discovery, things along those lines. You know, so I'm going to go back to what will make it sustainable. And then also emphasize that every peoples on this planet was indigenous at some point. The church went after the heretics first. If you didn't believe in the difference between Christ being the Son of God or being God, you were killed. If you didn't believe in the subtleties and the nuances of how the Nicene Church decided to interpret things, you were killed off. And then they went after the heathens. That's when they started destroying all the indigenous beliefs on the European continent and then spread out all over the world. So there is indeed an ingrained fear genetically through thousands of years. And I had to overcome that myself when I started getting into herbalism, when I started talking to spirits, when I started doing all these things. And I finally had to say, screw it, regardless of what people were thinking and pursue what my passion was. But there was that great fear, and I don't know if it came from a past life or genetically or what, that this will get me killed, this will get me tortured and killed. You know, I really had to work at overcoming that and stop basically hiding. So again, your list goes back to the soul thing, because as long as I held on to those things, I was self-limiting. And as long as I'm self-limiting, there's no way I'm gonna be able to break out and actually stand in my full power, overcome my limitations, and step into my leadership. And, and I cannot emphasize 
how pervasive and how perverse all of this has been. And it's been going, I mean, like basically the pyramids were done 10,000 years ago. The church insists a white person had to have done it within the last 5,000 years and did it overnight, you know? You know, that type of a thing. And until I realized like, ah, oh, that's part of me. Then that'll make me stand another quarter of an inch and then another quarter of an inch. You know, that will make me face my opponent and know that they are wrong. And that will give me the ability not to rise to their bait and fight it on their terms because I know the lies that they're working with. And I can sit and, and quite honestly, I learned as a kid, um, revenge served cold, revenge is best served better cold. If I go into a fight angry because of what you said, I'm gonna lose automatically. And I'm sitting there doing the redneck thing. Keep talking while I load my gun, dude. <laughs> Expend your energy on crap. And then we're gonna have a real conversation or one of us is going down to show us how they can. I mean, violence is the last resort, but basically I think, and I'm not a martial artist, but you know, to any degree, but I don't aim for a quarter of an inch before your chest. I don't aim for your chest. I'm aiming to go fucking through you. You know, and that replies my whole body, my whole mind, my whole soul. I'm not punching to hit your nose. I'm punching to put my fist through the back of your head. You know, so you're gonna feel the full impact of everything I bring to this table. And it's that point I can slip, I can step into leadership and pass that on to others. And so it's sort of interesting. As soon as something, as soon as you hear it's demonic, a demon, or evil, head in that direction, because that's where your power is. Because the only pre the, the thing evil was never added until the very end of whatever length of time they were tracking, whatever time they were tracking this word. And that was pretty much probably in the last, you know, eight, 1500 years that it became evil, you know? So when I understand that, yeah, and I'm standing there facing somebody, I'm just like, yeah, fool, just keep talking. Just keep talking, just keep talking. And I'm not rising to the bait. Knowledge is power. And it also helps me cut the binds, my, my self-imposed limitations. Because I begin to understand these are not mine and I do not have to take it. And if you want to get all new agey, it can be cutting cords. <laughs> it can be soul retrieval. Um, you know, and I'm seeing more people are beginning to realize the importance of ancestral healing literally ancestral around the lodge i've heard and i've seen and i've experienced some amazing the fulcrum and the lever energetic shifts that take place when people look at these things i have brought men to tears connecting them to the ancestors because a lot of you are americans one of the things they've done is give them a, a fake construct of white and then turn around and sever the fact that your ancestors were so i mean europe is the only continent european america europe i mean europeans is the only continent that turned on their own women for power control and greed i mean in mass mm. so you I, know so I'll, it's yeah, go ahead. Finish this last thought because I want to, because I know why we had us to one and I know we're over time. So, oh, okay, gotcha. No, that's, I think you guys get the point, but it, it's a pro, it's a, a progression. That's right. Yes. Yeah, and what I'm hearing is, it's like it's a combination of state, like you said, it's a progression of stages. Yeah. Um, thank you, Ivy. Thank you. Because I, I wanted, I was like taking all this in. I want to really hear more of that in. I want to be respectful of time. Um, we're already I also over. wanted Chris to repeat, summarize what he said so it can be in the recording. I don't know. Yeah, if you, yeah. So, um, guys, if you can give that. me another maybe 15 minutes, um, if you guys are in with that, please do a thumbs up. 
Um, cool. Uh, so listen, I want to, Dana, um, I want to check in. Did you want to contribute before we have Chris and I summarize and then we have our checkout? Did you want to um, uh, tap in on like the solutions conversation as what you see out of the three, the soul and power, the transcendence or personal leadership? Did you have some thoughts on, on that before we move on? Absolutely. And thank you. Um, so one, I will say that I am soul empowered and I am transcendence. So I will talk about personal leadership. Um, you know, it's, it's a challenging time in our world and what we're dealing with, especially as people of color. And I recognize that my most powerful role is as a mother to my black son. Um, lifting and empowering him and teaching him, uh, teaching him about life, the world, himself, and his own power. And so there are so many times where I receive those lessons back to me. Uh, we recently talked about um, doing some healing. My friend's father had a surgery and I said, hey, Dev, do you want to join me? Um, you know, I want to send some healing love and light to Nicole's dad. And he began to tell me about his process of channeling strength and power and then said, but you already know this, mom. He's like, your power is spiritual power. And and this is how you do it. He's like, so stick with that, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, wow, who is this kid? He's 10. And I'm just, I'm so proud. I'm so proud that he's confident. I'm so grateful that I've been able to create an environment where he can be himself um, and be loved as a 10 year old kid and safe in our home and in our communities. And also understand that the world is not necessarily a safe space for him and that there are other expectations for him simply because he doesn't look like a 10 year old kid um it, it's challenging for me as, as a mom but at the same time i do have that spiritual strength and that full empowerment and i do the work every single day uh, one of the things that I've gotten involved in in this time is creating um, caucus groups uh, within my community. Um, right now I'm facilitating a Black Lives of Unitarian Universalist group um, that was designed specifically for people with African ancestry or that identify as Black um, within that Unitarian Universalist faith community, which is predominantly white. And it's just brought so much learning, healing, love, and support. We end each of our sessions with what does a community like this, what could a community like this mean to you? And so to hear where it's like strength and knowledge and family and, and togetherness and just all that it is, is really important and special. I know that my power does come from great intention and healing from prayers because that is just how I choose to channel it. Uh, and when I can do that in ways that impact larger circles to give other people support, to give people a space to voice themselves, their feelings, where they are, and just be, to affirm, lift, encourage, and motivate whether that's one person at a time or a hundred people at a time, I'm called to the work and I'm just so grateful to be able to show up and do it. So taking care of myself so that I can take care of others. Blessings. Dana, thank you for that. That's, and you hit, you hit on some points because I think that especially now as, as we move forward, and we talked before, Dana, about the wisdom from the elders and, and the ancestors. And I'm hearing like for, for Devin, he's getting the wisdom from you because he sees how you're taking care of yourself, how you heal. He's got his own practice. He's modeling you and building something for himself. And I think that's that's a key piece that's important in how we build our, the collective, the next generation uh, and our generation um, uh, right now. 
Thank you, Dana. Uh, Chris, can you summarize? Uh, Chris, you had some comments before. I wanted to get it on the recording for those that were unable to attend, um, and and also for Dana to hear as well. Can you summarize some of the things that you had mentioned before? Because I think you had some valuable, valuable pieces. I can, uh, uh, I can uh, summarize those, but there are some other things that have come up. Oh, bring those too. Bring those too. Uh, when you mentioned about uh, challenging concepts, I was in another circle and I talked about <clears throat> an ancestral wisdom and a person said something at first that was uh, kind of threw me off base, but I, I, I accept is not, not to, not for one not to be so focused on the past that they are unwilling to accept something new. That learning, learning. So if I, going back to talking about ancestors, a uh, wisdom, to to use our to use our mind and our heart and our intellect to find the things that worked, to look at the things that didn't work, why didn't they work, but also be looking forward to the new things that come that can come about uh, to to create to to use those the ancestral knowledge to the to to create some type of scientific model if you will so that new knowledge can be accepted so that there can be safety what someone else says so that there can be safety um, we, we we have the wind behind us, but we also looking forward. That keeps everything safe. Um, the other things that I mentioned were gardening. Gardening to deal with economic issues, to deal with nutritional issues, also to create a sense of community so that the older people, many of whom grew up on a farm, who grew up raising food, could feel valued so that would help with their health, their mental health and emotional health. And it would also help the whole community because they've already done those kind of things. To, to look at other things in our culture, like the, the power of dance and the power of music, that through all Afro-diasporic, Earth-based traditions there is, whether, whether it be juju, whether it be go-go, whether it be jazz, that because it can uplift us because it's so much that can put us down. We have to have something that can put us up. And music is also a way that a person can can experience transcendence. Um, so music, not um, to, to look at some things in our history, and I guess speaking from that point about ancestral healing, to look at African spiritual traditions because we are people of African descent. And let's go and talk about some of those demons, the hoodoo, the voodoo, the obia, the root, the root work, the conjure, those things that for many of us, just to even hear them, we want to re recoil. But as, as was said, looking at the definition of demon, even looking at those things. So what are the demons in the African tradition or African experience? And I would say it, it goes to the continent as well because I've, I've seen people from the continent who look at those things as backwards. But to have an objectivity and look at it, well, what worked, what didn't work, what about that? And I think also to realize that we are a conglomeration of various people. I've often wondered <clears throat> if what African Americans might have or Afro-Caribbeans might have that might be a learning for people on the continent is to get over the tribalism that we may have come here with and that might still exist in Africa. Because it didn't matter if you were Yoruba or Igbo or Congo or Ibibio or say Lufo, and this one does this and this one does that. You learned that didn't matter. You were all actually one people. And, and so African-Americans, a lot of things we don't know specifically about our particular lineage. We have things that we might hear. And, 
in a sense, we kind of accept it as, as, as one group. Whether this person in Virginia has this story about High John the Conqueror and this person in Texas has it, maybe it had to do because maybe one was able to or phone. But maybe it just has to do with transcendence that the, the spirit or the energy still continues. It changes. As Parliament said, funk not only moves, it can re-move. So let the funk move and let it re-move. And look up the word, look, uh, look at Robert, what is it? Robert Ferris Thomas, Flash of the Spirit. He was a professor, I don't know if he still is there, University of Texas, he wrote this book, Flash of the Spirit. He talks about African and Afro diasporic uh, spiritual traditions. And he does talk about the word funk as having, I think, a Congo, and uh, a Congo root word that meant, and, and pardon me if I don't remember it correctly, but someone that creates a very strong smell from an energetic pursuit. Mm. So we will say someone is funky, but also James Bond said, ain't it funky now? Not just meaning they stink, but kind of going on that thing, you put your foot in it. Yeah. Funky, getting down, getting in touch with something so much that you feel it so passionately. So mm. funk yes. not only moves, it can remove. Damn it, man. That's, listen, that, what a great way to to sum this this session up, man. Parliament. Parliament. <laughs> Parliament Funkadelic, baby. Yeah. Hey, uh, I'm so grateful that we transcend them. Thanks to the mothership. Yes. Look, uh, I'm I'm really excited that we got on this call, and um, and I'm I'm grateful. I'm grateful that you know that people are showing up. People want to show up, and we had this contribution. And that we recorded this. Again, I'm going to share this with um, with the people that did not that didn't have did, did didn't get the opportunity to attend, and you all will get a recording of this as well. Uh, as we wrap up, we are going to check out. I just want to I just want to sum up a couple things, um, guys. You guys are seeing right here on the screen. There is the uh, rundown of the upcoming dates. So what we're going to be what we're going to have is the next one that we're going to do is June fourteenth. I'm thinking one of the things. Oh, hold on, guys. This is uh, hold on, everybody. Uh, I'm thinking that what I'm going to do in this one. I'm going to get that book that Ivy was talking about, and for June next month. I'm thinking that we're gonna make this for black men, black fathers, and we're gonna talk about the sperm wars because uh, I'm fascinated by this right now. Um, and, and looking at- um, I'm Let's talk about it first before you commit to that because I don't think that's a long convers- I mean, it could- Yeah, talk about the penis as a whole thing, yes but not just focusing on sperm wars. Well, I'm, I'm actually focusing, I'm actually focusing on, on how black men are treating each other. Sperm wars, sperm wars will be a component of that. Um, but I think it's wise for us to look at how we're treating each other and what can we do to rise and lift as, as black men. Um, but this will be a coed conversation. And I think that having that component in it, because I think there is something unconsciously that we, we are looking to destroy ourselves. So the next sessions that we have coming up, we have June 14th, um, on Sunday, June 19th, or July 19th, in, uh, on the Sunday in July, and then August 16th um, for the August session. I am looking to do a fall roundtable retreat where we could talk about some of the solutions that we've collectively come up with and whether it's having some of the past guests or having specific speakers talk to some of the components, that's what I'm looking to do. If you're looking at, if you're interested in contributing or, or helping in that any way, please reach out to me. I'll have my contact information and follow up in the follow up email. Um, listen, I'm really grateful. I'm really grateful right now. And, and I know we're a little bit over the 15 minutes I requested, but I want us to check out as we close this container. Um, so we check out in the highest form. Uh, Ivy, can you light some of the African sage that you have before, please? Um, yep, I was just doing that. Yeah. Excellent. And uh, as a checkout, I'm going to have you uh, state your name, um, you know, your mood now, and, and, and what you got from the session today. And uh, I'm going to ask that we do this is, you know, in, in a respectful and quick, a quickly, quick fashion, as best as we can, while still honoring each other. So modeling it, uh, Paul Newell, uh, I have immense gratitude right now. Um, it's like, 
and I'm feeling like the feeling is like I have the ancestors on my hands on my body right now. It's freaking a really cool feeling right now. Um, and I'm, I'm grateful. And what I took away from today's session is that uh, these conversations are ready to be had. And, uh, and I'm in and out. Uh, let's go Keaton, uh, Dana, then Chris. Uh, Dana can actually go before me, uh, ladies first. Oh, you got it. Dana, please go ahead. Thank you. Um, again, my name is Dana. I am feeling energized. And my takeaway is uh, just the, the shared wisdom. I really appreciate it. So thank you. I say, thank you for joining us. Keaton. Uh, Keaton F. Baker. Um, I'm feeling really good that I, uh, that I did this. Um, I definitely, I, 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 I so appreciate the fact that we can actually do, you know, we can actually talk about who we are as, as, as people of color, uh, as black and brown men. And it's not a, it, it's not a, a war of words. And when I say this, you know, I, I hate when I hear people who are always talking, who are always trying to say like, uh, they want, they, you know, they want to take things back and we've been robbed and all this other stuff. And, uh, and that is just not me. I, I feel like when you're doing that, you're doing yourself a disservice. So the fact that we can have these conversations and question, and you know, we are, ang yes, we're angry. Yes, we want things to be better. Yes, we don't like things. But you know, we're we're doing it to kind of counter uh, to, to to counter out there. So I, I really thank you for um, doing that. I really do. I, I feel so educated. Like I want so much more now. Um, so I really thank you for uh, giving me the opportunity to even speak my mind uh, because I, I, I do feel like you guys universally understand what I'm talking about, and that's not coming from a bad place. So I thank you for that, and I am out. Blessings. Thank you for being here, Keith. It means a lot, man. Looking forward to seeing you in the next session, man. Chris, then Ivy. Oh, Chris, um, I'm checking out, feeling more energy in my, in my body and in my mind. And it's because I was able to um, share things and be listened to. Often, I think we're not... I think uh, I've heard I heard this in another group that as people of color we're not often listened to you know what we think is not value so that I, I'm aware that that's one of the things that happened I'm also my mind is stimulated by the different ideas and perspectives that I've heard um, it's I, I judge that it's good for people to be in community and um, I'm doing my um, isolation thing for the you know COVID and stuff so this is a really I judge it to be a very healthy thing and a, a way of uh, connecting with people that I have not had for a long time so it's it's awakening some things in myself that have been dormant and dormant um, making me aware of some things that have been inside of me but they've just been dormant so maybe it's like that garden again maybe just you know, you, you first, I guess the soil has to be there. Mm. And you get, get pull up some of the weeds. Maybe some of them ain't weeds. Maybe they're herbs. Uh, <laughs> maybe they ain't demons. Maybe they ain't weeds. Yeah. Who said it's a weed? Who said it's a weed? Yeah. <laughs> weed is something you just don't know how to use yet. <laughs> so, so I'm, I'm, I'm checking out with laughter, and I. And I like that. Thank you. Blessings, brother. Thank you so much for being here, brother. Thank you. Thank you. Ivy, take us home, man. Um, bro, Ivy. It's sort of interesting. Uh, Chris brought, uh, kept using the word funk. I, 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 I'm going to look this up and try to get it into the message soon. But mm. maybe that would have been the shortest way to describe the deep, pungent odor of this herb, is it brings the funk. It really does. It's, it's like so different than to say, not sweet and fluffy. You know, it's like, um, uh, well, a sense of connection and a sense of hope, you know, in one sense, I know this is going to happen. 
and it's good to see it happening. It's written in the stars. And and um, and, and uh, Paul knows that for a couple of years, I've been working on and putting out this whole thing of not only rescinding the oath, but taking back our planet. You know, the ancestors are behind us. The cosmos is behind us. Uh, energies are just right. And seeing this is like, yeah, the drops are beginning to come together to form one hell of an ocean. There's going to be another flood. <laughs> <laughs> And with that, I'm out. <laughs> Ooh, man. Bless up, bless up. You guys got me feeling all emotional here. I'm like, uh, and thank you, Paul, for bringing this together and sticking on it and being you. Appreciate it. Man, you, listen, I I'm excited to keep this going because it I can tell this is going to build more and more men and more and more women. Um, of, of people of color coming together, man. Let's educate each other. Let's connect because I think this is, Ivy, you hit it. This is the time. Now's the time. So I thank you all. There's a couple of links that Ivy um, saved uh, to put in the chat. I'm going to also include these links in the follow up email. So you guys will have that by tomorrow morning. I appreciate you all. Thank you all for being here. Thank you for showing up for, for yourselves. Thank you for showing up for me. Thank you for showing up for the collective because this is this right here created an impact. Blessings, peoples. I appreciate you all. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Enjoy the day, everybody. Peace. Thank you. Can't wait for the next one. Yeah, me too. I'm looking forward to it, bro. Blessings, man. <laughs> all right. Thank you, guys. Have a good Bless day. You. Peace. Peace, Keith. Peace, Chris. Peace, Ivy. Dana, peace.